This is a fossil, and this is not. Identifying fossils isn't easy, and it's made all the more difficult by the plethora of other things that look like they could be fossils. I spoke to Dr Elizabeth Smith at the Australian Opal Centre's Black Opal Heritage Shed about false fossils, silly silica and strange formations found underground. And it's, it's quite hard at times to distinguish between plant fossil and bone at Lightning Ridge. And because there's such a huge diversity of plants and animals in fossil form, you can expect the unexpected all the time. This, for example, you think, oh yeah, all right, that's a bone. It kind of looks right, it's got the same on both sides. There's some sort of geometry to it, but it's a knobby. It's, it's not a fossil. A knobby is a nodule of silica. A knobby is just a, a blob of silica that formed at some point of weakness in the, in the sediments as they dried out. At some point where clay was moving against clay, or there were faults or compressions going on, compaction. And knobbies are absolutely unique to Lightning Ridge. This is just a knobby, even though it's a very complex sort of structure. Here again, just a knobby, very complex. But this is just silica that formed inside cavities in the sediment. But once you know what a bone looks like, such as that, which is a little slender dinosaur foot bone, you can see smooth texture, fine contours, it's like something you'd pull out of a barbecue chook. This, for example, is a little turtle tailbone. Again, you mightn't pull it out of your barbecue chook, but if you're into eating turtles, that's the sort of thing you might find. They're very different from things like this, for example, which is plant fossil and very, very amorphous. It's been weathered and decomposed before it was dropped into the waterway, before it went down into the mud and the sediment, or it decomposed in the mud and you haven't got a lot of fine detail preserved. It hasn't got those smooth surfaces or lustrous sort of contours, that sort of thing. It's quite different. This, for example, this wacky looking thing, is it or isn't it? It's not a fossil, just a knobby, again. But this sort of thing here, now that's a bone. That's the caudal, a tailbone from a, a plant-eating dinosaur that was about two metres long. And you can see fine, smooth surface texture. This sort of porous bone is recorded in potch. This is where the spinal cord ran through. So it was sitting that way in the animal. This was the end of the tail down there. And the animal was about two metres long. This, for example, is nothing of the sort. This is totally different. This is where potch has filled cracks in the clay stone. And this is called septarian, where you've got these septa, these divisions. And when you think about septaria at Lightning Ridge, probably the most common thing is material like this. This is plant fossil. It's been compacted. It's part of a stem along here. It's been really strongly compacted. And as it decomposed, or before it dropped into the mud, it was cracked. And these cracks here are recorded because the silica filled the cracks. The silica, remember the silica was a liquid. It filled these cracks, and that's what's preserved, this cracking structure, this network of very fine lines that records cracks in, in decomposing plant material. And this piece here is similar. It's a larger piece, it's quite, it's quite spectacular actually, with quite a nice blue colour in it. But this again is plant fossil. And what's recorded there is the ghost of a plant. You've got the cracks that formed as the plant decomposed. Uh, this one here is a little more difficult to spot. And you think, well, is it a fossil or isn't it? If you're looking at just that, you think this is just the same funny network stuff, septarian stuff, like this where silica has filled cracks in the clay stone and it's a fairly random sort of pattern you end up with. It's not plant fossil, it's something else. But then if you turn this one over, you can see this very fine granular texture. You can see it as a fragment from a theropod vertebra. So this is part of, a, part of the backbone of a big meat-eating dinosaur. 
and my goodness, you have to be really aware of all these slight differences and nuances to recognise that as a piece of dinosaur. It's, it's not easy spotting that sort of thing. It's fairly difficult explaining what's a fossil at Lightning Ridge and what isn't because the silica, the opal, was at one time liquid and for that reason it was filling cracks and cavities in very, very fine clay stone and sediment and some of those cracks and cavities were formed by organic objects lying in the mud and dissolving away slowly over a long time or a fairly short time. But one of the most beautiful illustrations of the fact that the silica was liquid or viscous at one stage is these gorgeous little objects which are like chocolates, hard on the outside, soft inside. They're no longer soft inside but you can see they seem to have formed when nodules of silica gradually hardened on the outside while the inside was still soft and then they've been compacted by some sort of movement in the claystone and the soft center is sort of squished out which is exactly what would happen if you trod on a, a peppermint cream same thing and they're pretty wonderful these are really rare these are really unusual little objects and I think that's the most simple explanation of these really oddball little structures. Just the most perfect little samples of really, really complex geochemical processes. The other things at Lightning Ridge that are so common is this sort of material, which is just weathered plant material. This is debris, detritus, plant fossil from the bottom of those freshwater systems, from the bottom of the billabong or the lake here like that, just plant fossil. And honestly, in some places in Lightning Ridge, there's literally buckets and buckets and buckets of this. At the Opal Centre in Lightning Ridge, we have a fossil identification service every Saturday, which is always pretty interesting because people are bringing in material all the time to be identified. And quite honestly, sometimes I just cannot identify it. It's really difficult, but other times I can do it and know the stuff. Something that we've seen a bit of, for example, is this sort of thing. And the opal miners come in and they say, I've got a koala bear paw. But it's not a koala bear paw. It is a fossil though. It's, it's a lungfish tooth plate. And lungfish had two of these in the bottom jaw and two in the top jaw. This is the grinding surface of the plate. This was quite a big lungfish. And yeah, it looks like a bear's paw, but it isn't. When we're looking at the plant fossil, this sort of material, just little stems and scraps of plants, we're all the time looking for anatomical structure in it, for actual evidence of what the plants looked like. These are pretty indistinct, it's just miscellaneous bits and pieces. But here, for example, now this looks totally different, but in fact it's plant fossil. What you've got here is part of a stem, the stem went through there, and these diagonal ridges are the bases of big ribbon-like leaves that were wrapped around the stems. So you get these strange arrow-pointed shapes, arrowheads and spear points. And they're completely mysterious. We don't know what sort of plants these were. This is the sort of material we have in the Opal Centre collection. An enormous number of pieces like this. We're not discarding anything. We're hanging on to all of this because at some point a brilliant paleobotanist is going to come along and say, aha, uh -huh, I know what they are. And that'll be pretty exciting when that happens. I've been waiting for it for a long time. They're great. But that's, of course, not all we've got in the collection. The collection's building up all the time with utterly fabulous objects. And these are objects that tell such a big story. And it's so important to the history of inland Australia because it includes the inland sea and the breakup of Gondwana, the drying out of Australia, and some very, very restricted and, and odd conditions that, that pertained at that time. So it's, it's all fairly exciting stuff. Many of the objects we've just looked at are part of the Australian Opal Centre's incredible collection of opal and opalised fossils. 
If you visit Lightning Ridge, and you should visit Lightning Ridge, you should visit the Australian Opal Centre and check out the amazing displays of opal, opalised fossils from the age of dinosaurs, and opal mining heritage items. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to this channel so you don't miss out on more awesome things from the Australian Opal Centre's collection in future videos. Thank you for watching.